Today, I'm really excited to talk to Ethan Evans, who has had a very long and illustrious career in tech. He was recently a vice president of engineering at Amazon. You were probably the person in charge of evaluating the most senior ICs out there. You're a principal engineer, senior staff engineer, like these very, very senior levels. So I'm curious about if you could share a little bit at that high a level, when you get together with other VPs or directors, what kind of conversation are you having to make a judgment on this person's impact as an IC? So first thing, of course, with a principal engineer, or senior staff engineer, is they must be technically excellent. That's table stakes. But then as a leader, I'm judging, can they deploy that technical expertise to help me? Can they help mm. me make better decisions? Can they help me grow other engineers? So are they mentoring? Are they putting in place systems? Are they putting in place architectures? And are they helping with critical decisions? And are they willing to do that? Or are they curmudgeons about it? In other words, am I having to like beg them to stop coding or to go to a design review or to help this struggling team? Or are they like, no, where do you need me? I want to have an impact, you know, are they bringing me things? Are they coming to me? It's great that they're a guru on the hill that if I go to them and know to write the, ask the right question, they'll give me the right answer. That's table stakes. But will they come to me and say, hey, I was looking at the business problem we have and there's this new technology we can buy or build or borrow that will solve this problem that will unlock customers. That's the other thing. Are they willing to talk about non-technical matters? They don't have to love them. They don't have to be experts. But do they understand that technology for itself is not what we're here for? We're here to either make money or grow number of customers or reduce costs. And that doesn't mean that they have to think of themselves as, oh, I'm a salesperson or a marketer, but they have to understand the technology they're building is about meeting those monetary or customer ends. So yeah. I'm evaluating, are you technically capable? But then will you use that willingly will you help me with it will you make yourself useful with it and those are my stars if i'm the ceo of the business are they going to be the cto who's like i will make sure your technology works that it's the right technology and that it meets our needs efficiently and i will always be there to keep you out of technical trouble that's my person hmm. I like that. One of the things that I talk about in when I talk about getting to a very senior level is around how there are different modalities of getting there, like archetypes of, you know, you could be the executive advisor, you could be technically very, very deep in something that no one else understands and different things like that. One of the things that strikes me about your description is that at these very senior levels, you need to have a pretty deep level of interaction with these folks, right? So I'm curious about what you described will lead to a world in which people are fawning over the executive team and say, oh, what you do is 100% correct. And I'm just going to be there to serve you as opposed to, hey, let me do the actual, you know, thing that no one else understands, but I need to do it for the company. I'm curious if you commentary on that. Well, the most important commentary I have for your staff engineers is what Andy Jassy used to say when he ran AWS and not all of Amazon. When Andy ran AWS, he said, I like to have principals who are deep and working on very hard problems and don't distract them with having them do a bunch of meetings or architecture, because if they're on a hard enough problem, it's OK if they just work on that. But the key hmm. was it had to be a hard enough problem that dedicating such a senior person was going to produce that kind of value. And so like we had one engineer who was working on nothing but security and a chip. But of course, at AWS level, if you could like raise the level of security or networking that was baked into the hardware, that was incredibly valuable. And it was fine that we were burning a whole principal and he didn't participate in any meetings or or coach or mentor anybody else because the technical solution was so valuable mm. and it needed depth. You can you, there are different modalities. There's the advisor sort of helps the whole org be better. That's the CTO model. Like yeah. I'm the technical leader for the whole org. And there is this individual deep expert, but that's only going to work if the problem is worth enough. It's got to be hard enough and valuable enough. And then I'm happy to have someone who's just an expert. As a IC or manager, what would you say is the most important skill to evaluate in my own manager? Because I think to your point, I want to go work for a leader 
who is garnering more and more resources, more and more scope, because that will kind of flow down to me as a manager or an IC. What would be the skill to look for in my leader? So I would say there's two things. The first is, do they invest in people? Do they have a track record of growing and promoting people? Because they may be succeeding, but are they going to take you with them? Another way to look at that is, do they have a set of people who follow them from role to role or team to team, company to company? Because if they have people who want to work for them, it's a good sign that they're worth working for. The second thing is, what is their trajectory? So this one's really easy. You go to LinkedIn and you look at their history, if it's there, and otherwise you figure it out some other way. But are they moving up consistently? Do they have a track record of growth? Because if they do, it's basically an old saying, past performance is the best predictor of future performance. If they have had a trajectory of, oh, they were an engineer, then a lead engineer, then a manager, then a senior manager, and at each jump, they're six months or a year faster than other people, then probably they're going to jump again faster. And mm. if they're slower, they're, no, this person was like, a lead engineer for a long time before they got their shot at manager and then they've been a manager forever and they just made senior manager they're on the slow train and if you hitch your car to their slow train you're going to be on the slow train too probably hmm. to wrap up then uh where should i point people to where do you want people to learn more about your work yeah the best places to find me are on linkedin where i'm ethan evans vp and at my Substack. level up with ethan evans on substack.com those are the two places Okay, perfect. I'll leave links for both of those in the description of the video. Uh, thank you so much, Ethan. It's been really fun getting to know you for the past few few months and, and hope we can continue some sort of collaboration going forward. Yeah, absolutely. What you're doing is super necessary. Both the community and the uh, place for ICs, the, the guidance, because I'm asked about that and I can't do, just like I told you, I can't do the whole thing because I yeah, haven't yeah. walked that path. I can't speak to what it's like to be a staff engineer because I exited engineering six months in.